South Korea's parliament has voted to impeach President Park Geun-hye over a corruption scandal. Protesters had lobbied hard to have her thrown out. So will public anger change a culture of cozy ties between politicians and big business? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program in Doha. I'm Adrian Finnegan. South Korea's President Park Geun-hye has been facing calls for her resignation for weeks, and now Parliament is forcing her hand. She's been embroiled in a corruption scandal that led to the biggest street protests in South Korean history, and now the country's first impeachment. Nearly eight out of ten members of Parliament voted against Park, including about half of her own party. Her executive powers have been suspended, and a court will rule on whether she should permanently step down. We'll discuss the future of South Korea with our guests in just a moment. But first, Harry Fawcett looks back at Park's career. South Korea's National Assembly chamber has witnessed uproarious moments in its past. Sit-ins, punch-ups, barred doors. But on this day, history was made with calm deliberation. 299 of its 300 members casting a vote on the impeachment of their president. The result, conclusive. In total, there were 299 votes for impeachment 234, against 56 votes, and two did not vote. Therefore, Park and his impeachment bill has passed. The president left to perform one last act before her powers were suspended, meeting the members of her cabinet. I solemnly accept the voice of the parliament and the people and sincerely hope this confusion is soundly resolved. Park and Hay's public life began in tragedy. An assassin aiming for her father, strongman leader Park Chung-hee, instead killed her mother. A private young woman found herself serving as de facto first lady, at the same time developing a close relationship with a man named Choi Tae-min, a charismatic cult leader who told Park he could communicate with her late mother. Park's friendship with Choi's daughter, Sun Sil, would last four decades and ultimately cause her downfall. Choi's alleged meddling in state affairs and using her influence to enrich herself and her family caused anger and disgust. Last weekend was the biggest expression of that so far. 1.7 million said organizers protesting on the streets of Seoul. A smaller protest today outside the National Assembly, one that ended in celebration. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera, Seoul. So, after the fall of Park, what needs to be done to address growing inequality and soaring living costs in a country that's been seen as an economic marvel? Let's bring in our guests for today. From Seoul, via Skype, we're joined by Bong yong chik research fellow at Yonsei University Institute for North Korean Studies. From Exeter in the UK, Aidan Foster Carter, honorary senior research fellow in sociology and modern Korea at Leeds University. And also from Seoul, Sewon Koo, managing editor at uh, Korea Expose. Gentlemen, welcome uh, to you all. Uh, Bong yong chik let's start with you. Is there any likelihood that the Constitutional Court judges will rule in Park's favour? Well, we cannot rule out anything yet. Uh, the Constitutional Court will uh, take a very heavy case compared to the another impeachment case against the pre then President Do Mui Hyun in 2004. But uh, the, according to the 2004 ruling against impeaching President Roe permanently, the Constitutional Court set some principles which is that the, the president should be proven to have been in gross and serious violation of the constitution and law. And uh, uh, the charge, charges made in the, uh, the impeachment bill submitted and passed at National Assembly um, stipulates uh, nine uh, main breaches of the constitution and law. So it is up to the constitutional court to take a you know, deep look at all those nine you know, charges, but if one a charge is proven uh, valid, then President Park uh, will not come back to the office. Aidan Foster Carter, <clears throat> with this scandal now that's been going on, on for months, and now this impeachment vote in, in Parliament, why does mm. she just not step aside? 
Search me, Gov, as we say in my country. Um, this is really quite hard to understand because it's hard to see what she, let alone the country, has to gain by her clinging on like this. If she were simply to resign, uh, the Constitution is clear. Uh, a fresh election would be called within 60 days. Uh, that would be pretty difficult for the political parties, both Conservative and Liberal opposition, because none of them are really ready. They're gearing up for next year when she'd have to go anyway. But still, they would manage it. And we would know where we are. Within two months, South Korea would have a new government with a fresh mandate. Whereas this way, my fear is that it can go on for months. The Constitutional Court, if it so chooses, one hopes it won't, can take up to six months, and it could conceivably find in her favour, in which case I fear the streets would erupt. So she's prolonging the agony, really, and I don't, I don't know that anybody understands why. Perhaps some of my fellow guests can th from Seoul can throw some light on that. Aidan, it, it, is a, a period of political paralysis now, do you think, inevitable? I do, um, because South Korea has a strongly presidential system. The Prime Minister has been described rather unkindly, I mean the Post, not the incumbent, as sort of chief cook and bottle washer. Basically, it's someone who does what they're told. Uh, one has to hope that Mr. Huang, uh, who is not widely popular nor tested, will rise to the occasion, because things are going to be in his hands from now on. But what a time for the ship of state to be perhaps drifting. I mean, you've got the economy not doing very well, as you've already suggested. We have the ever present present threat of North Korea, which of course is crowing gleefully about uh, the regime change happening in, in, the, in the other Korea. And the new factor is Trump. Uh, suddenly the US, the ally that has protected South Korea all these years, has got a loose cannon coming in as president who has said quite rude things about South Korea in the past, doesn't like the existing trade deal, they should pay more for their own defence. So really one does need a very much proactive and alert leadership at the moment and that's just what South Korea is not going to have for weeks if not for months. Okay, we'll come on to some of the, the, the issues you raised there in just a moment, but I want to nail down, if I can, first of all, this, this, um, uh, this um, issue of, of, um, of why she won't resign. Say Wong Koo, is, is the Prime Minister completely isolated politically? Does she still have friends? Why hasn't she resigned? Well, it doesn't look like she has very many friends left at this point. Uh, we have seen, actually, some demonstrations in favour of the President here in downtown Seoul. And talking to those people in the streets, you really get the sense that these people support her precisely because she is seen as the daughter of her father, General Park Jong-hee, who ruled South Korea from 1961 to 1979. He is someone who is still revered by the conservatives here in South Korea today. And they want to very much believe that Park Geun-hye continues to carry out the legacy of this great man. As to why she's not Resigning is a very interesting question, but actually if you listen to what the president has said in her three different apologies to the nation, you get some sense of how she's thinking at the moment. She has apologized for the fact that she has surrounded herself with wrong people, such as Che sun si but she has also quite adamantly denied the possibility that she might herself be involved in any criminal wrongdoing. And in fact, she's dragging out this proceeding in order to have her day in court. What impeachment really means is simply for the lawmakers to throw suspicion on her. But the decision as to why she did anything wrong resides with the constitutional court. And we are going to see the president preparing to mount the strongest defense that she can in order to argue that despite the overwhelming mountain of allegations against her, she still might get away with some sense of innocence. And this for her would be a very important thing because she is someone who has cared very much about the sense of honor. Do you, do she does not want a disgraceful exit. Okay. Do, do you think so she, she will continue okay. to fight? Do you think she could survive this? Well, that is a separate question. What we have seen today here in South Korea is that her own party, the ruling Senuri party, has now, well, thrown her overboard. They realize that she has become a huge political liability, and this is not something that the lawmakers want to deal with any longer. Already, the party's brand has been so tarnished by this scandal that there are talks in Yeoido, where the National Assembly is located, that the ruling party will soon undergo some kind of rebranding effort, perhaps in the ways of changing its name or by trying to institute new leadership so that they can distance themselves as much as possible from the president and from the scandal so that they can prepare for the presidential election that is inevitably going to take place in spring or 
perhaps as late as this summer. OK, um, let's, let's put all that to, to Bong yung then. then. Um, uh, has this scandal um, uh, damaged Park's party's prospects? I mean, is there, is there a, a likely successor, and could they win uh, a presidential election? Well, it is true that the ruling party, Senri Party, is in a rock and hard place because of its uh, implications to President Park Geun-hye. And it will be very difficult for this party to keep distance from the present scandal, at least for a while. But at the same time, there is a growing number of conservative South Koreans who are uh, increasingly concerned about potential chaos in the aftermath of the uh, passing of the impeachment bill. So there is a chance for this ruling party to somehow rebrand itself and consolidate the conservative uh, members in the society uh, with the uh, uh, United uh, uh, you know, candidate. Uh, the name of the United Nations uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has been you know, around uh, as a potential candidate to represent the conservative faction in politics. And you should remember that um, the opposition party has uh, multiple very qualified, ambitious, and seasoned politicians who have expressed their personal you know, aspirations to run uh, for the president's office in the upcoming election. So uh, it might be just one conservative party candidate against multiple uh, candidates from the opposition parties, and the result may be the same as the presidential election in 1987, when the ruling party uh, candidate, Mr. Noteu, won the election yeah. with only 34% of the popular votes against the com combined 55% of the entire votes that yeah. went to the opposition party candidate. Okay. So uh, we are in a very uncertain situation with regard to who's going to win the next uh, presidential election. Let's, uh, let's move uh, the discussion along a little here. South Korea's top corporations, uh, known as Chaebols, have played a crucial role in the transformation from an agrarian society to a manufacturing powerhouse. Long accused of wielding too much clout with politicians, the heads of nine top companies were questioned by Parliament earlier this week. They've donated billions of dollars to foundations controlled by Choi Soon-sil. The woman at the center of the corruption scandal that's led to President Park's impeachment. Cozy ties with politicians were largely accepted, while the Chabol spearheaded rapid growth. But now the economy is slowing, and the big corporations are facing their own struggles, ranging from Samsung recalling phones to shipping major Hanjin declaring uh, bankruptcy. Uh, Aidan Foster Carter. Um, so the heads of the nine top chabels questioned by Parliament over, over their role in the scandal. Will this affair, do you think, at the very least, usher in a new area, a, a new era of clean politics in South Korea? Um, I'm sorry to say that I, I would be glad to be corrected by those actually on the spot, but I fear that is not the case. I mean, that was a, a, a wonderful, if, if slightly depressing, piece of reality TV that we had on Tuesday as one of the several probes that are ongoing, because uh, there are prosecutors as well. But Parliament did its bit before the impeachment, so it had the power to call these normally very private, intensely powerful people, the heads of Samsung, Hyundai and others, and give them a grilling and basically be quite rude to them. And uh, Lee Jae Young in particular, who's the heir apparent at Samsung, because Samsung great uh, company though it is in many ways spot a bother with one phone that's true I mean it has a succession practice which could come straight from Pyongyang frankly he's the, the son of the comatose chairman and frankly he was very unimpressive so uh, people love to hate the Chebol I mean people would like everyone wants to, their, their children to work for the Chebol the jobs aren't there anymore but they remain extremely powerful you would think they could play they tried to play the victim on this occasion because after all if political power comes uh, it says you know you will donate to, to these people somebody who's a friend of the president uh, it's kind of an offer you still can't refuse but I fear I see more continuity than change on that front say one I, I saw you smiling and nodding in, in agreement there um, I just wonder how um, a, a government can uh, investigate uh, family empires that it partly owns well I mean we have seen through the scandal just to what extent there is uh, this close relationship between the political establishment and the business community. 
So we had these uh, heads of the Chebol or the major conglomerates of South Korea coming to the National Assembly to give their testimonies regarding just what role they played in this uh, saga. And what we are seeing is that they're all flatly denying any wrongdoing. They are saying that, yes, they did give money to the foundations controlled by Che sun -si, but they really did not expect anything in return. And there are a lot of people in South Korea just shaking their heads at this statement because they recognize that in South Korea there is this very long history of relationship between the business community, uh, perhaps uh, financially benefiting the politicians in return for decisions that would be very favorable for the companies in return. And Samsung, of course, is in very hot water right now because it went through this very delicate succession process that Aiden Foster Carter was describing. And there are questions as to whether they were essentially paying for paying Choi sun -si to help the government come to a decision that would enable the succession. So many people angry about the chaebol and the corruption and the kind of things they might be doing behind the scene. How can we really solve that when the politicians themselves are part of the problem? And that is something that that's not really being addressed by any of the, the solutions that are being proposed in the response to the Choi sun -si scandal. Yes, it looks like the president is going down. Yes, it looks like Choi sun -si will probably go to jail. She's already in jail, but facing charges. So what is going to happen to the Chebol? Are we going to see a thorough investigation of this during the special independent probe that that is going to start on December 21st, we hope, but it doesn't seem like there is a great deal of expectation that this is going to be a success. Uh, Bong Yuchik, how could an individual well, like Choi, with, with no official position in government, have, have influenced massive conglomerates, conglomerates like, like these to hand over money? Well, it is very explained by the previous speaker that uh, it's a very personal business when it comes to politics in South Korea. Um, think about it. Uh, we had the first congressional hearing uh, by summoning um, heads of the major corporations, Chebos, in 1988, about 28 years ago. And the head of uh, Chebos, who appeared at the congressional hearings this Tuesday, uh, were their, their children, their sons and you know, grandsons. So the collusion between the state and uh, conglomerates uh, has a long history. And to this many, uh, to many South Koreans, the collusion uh, does not seem to be uh, on decline in any significant ways. Um, but at the same time, uh, the anger and fury expressed by South Korean citizens uh, witnessing the collusion between the state and the conglomerates would uh, make uh, very fertile ground political conditions for so-called outside maverick politicians. Uh, something, uh, something like the Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders syndrome in the U.S. presidential election. So the rising popularity of the outside politicians, such as the current mayor of Seoul, Park Won Sun, the longtime uh, you know NGO movement leader and the human rights lawyer, or the current mayor of Songnam City, Mr. Lee Jae Myung, uh, account for the growing popularity and support rendered by South Korean citizens. So there is a growing mandate uh, set by South Korean citizens that something, something fundamental has to be done in order to cut, sever the tie between the state and the chapel. Okay, and uh, Aiden, do you want to come back on, on, on what you've heard there from, uh, from our two guests on the spot, as, uh, as, as you say it? Will this scandal lead to a so-called Trump effect fueled by public anger towards the political establishment and its ties with these wealthy conglomerates? Yes, I think that's certainly possible. Um, as was just mentioned, I mean, one figure who seems to like being described as the, as the Trump or the Sanders of South Korea, a mayor of a city, Songnam, quite near Seoul, is quite hard-talking leftist. Um, he's, he's very anti to the Chebol, uh, wants to see the president in jail. But also, you know, the other policies go with this. He says he would, he would talk to Kim Jong-un in North Korea, which is a reminder, you know, there's, there's, there's actually that issue as well. I'd also like to add that the, whenever the election comes in South Korea and it, you know it's set for about a year from now but as I agree it will almost certainly come sooner one way or another um, because South Korea shares with the UK uh, a first-past-the-post electoral system this has been alluded to already but let's just specify
how they out. So basically, you've no idea who's going to win in a fractious thing. If the, the left at the moment is divided into two parties, it has happened to conservatives before. So but whichever side manages, uh, if left or right manages to have to unite behind a single candidate, as the right might, might behind former uh, sorry UN Secretary General, still current UN Secretary General, three weeks ago, Ban Ki Moon, um, uh, then you know they might win, even though the current at the moment is, if you like, overwhelmingly against, against conservatives. So it's okay. the, you know, the number of unknowns are absolutely mounting, but I, I remain pessimistic that much will be done about the relation between power and money. Well, Park's impeachment comes at a time when South Korea is uh, becoming an increasingly influential world player. It is the world's sixth largest exporting nation, and a recent report named South Korea the world's top emerging weapons producer. That's especially significant given its proximity to territorial disputes in the South China Sea. Six nations all claim to own part of that region. Uh, Park's impeachment may also affect relations between South and North Korea, as Aiden was uh, just saying there. The president was known for her tough stance against uh, its northern neighbor, and uh, she was working on mending South Korea's relations with Japan, but that progress could now be uh, on hold. Uh, Sewon Koo, what are the, strate the strategic implications of, of the political uncertainty in South Korea? What What's it going to mean for uh, trilateral cooperation, for instance, uh, with Japan and the U.S.? That is a good question because with uh, President Park Geun-hye's authority now being suspended, it also means that the kind of policies that she has been pursuing over the course of, over the course of her presidency are in doubt. Uh, many people here are talking about the comfort women deal that she tried to sign with the uh, with Japan over how best to deal with the issue of uh, military sexual slavery that was uh, uh, run in colonial Korea by the Japanese authorities. Of course, she's tried to close that chapter of history and trying to bring some um, support, financial support for the surviving victims. But that was a deal that many people opposed. And even to this day, there is uncertainty as to whether this deal was really implemented or not. And of course, if she leaves office, then we just don't know what the future will be. Another interesting puzzle for us is what is going to happen to the missile defense, defense system that Park geun tried to introduce here in South Korea called THAAD. Of course, this brought enormous anger from China, which is now being suspected of trying to curtail Korean cultural products um, from being imported into China over the fact that Korea is perhaps trying to implement this deal with America. Mm. That too is now, okay. uh, has been thrown into uncertainty. All right, Aidan Foster Carter, we're rapidly running out of time here. Um, will North Korea or China seek to take advantage of any political paralysis uh, in South Korea? It's possible. I mean, China wouldn't take advantage in a direct sense, but I mean, they will certainly hope that the third deal won't go through, although, I mean, it, it may or may not be a done deal. I mean, all of the specifics this throws out, this is a difficult one. North Korea, well, in a sense, why wouldn't they? I mean, the South and the US always banging on about regime change in the North, um, and now we see huge weakness in the South. Uh, if the North's rhetoric means anything, I mean, I don't want to be sort of uh, alarmist about this, but there were reports that they've just hacked into uh, a South Korean military intranet, for instance, um, if, 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 South, if North Korea was ever minded to try something, why would you not do it when your opponent is so weak? That would be my fear, but obviously one hopes to be wrong. Gentlemen, we are out of time. Many thanks indeed for being with us, uh, Bong Young chik Aidan Foster Carter and uh, Se Wong Koo. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget you can see the programme again at any time just by going to the website. It's uh, at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, please join us at our Facebook page. You'll find that at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle, AJ at AJ Inside Story. From me, Adrian Finnegan, and the whole team here in Doha, thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Bye for now.